Ventilation techniques will vary depending on building construction. The one thing every ventilation crew can count on is not knowing every roof style they may encounter. Their job is knowing as many roof styles as possible to minimize mistakes and increase safety. Hi, I'm Zach Cates, Fire Station 164, and I'm Firefighter Marshall Lott, Fire Station 147. You know, the need for effective vertical ventilation is more important than ever. Lightweight building construction is dominating LA County, and the use of synthetic materials inside of structures is making fires burn hotter and faster. Over the last 30 years, firefighter deaths in structure fires are on a rise. This is partially due to poor or inadequate ventilation techniques. Ventilation techniques should be and must be coordinated with fire attack to have a positive outcome. The most recent studies have shown that once vertical ventilation is completed, it can take less than two minutes before flashover can occur. This can translate to unsurvivable conditions inside of the structure for anyone within minutes. Interior fire attack crews need to have water on or near the seat of the fire to make ventilation effective. Ventilation crews must support fire attack companies by communicating on the radio to establish if ventilation is needed, where ventilation is needed, and or if ventilation being done is effective. Remember, an open door is a ventilation point and should be controlled. Allowing an open door to stay open decreases survivability of victims due to the allowance of fire to progress through its stages until temperatures reach up to 800 to 1000 degrees. Closing this ventilation point puts a break on the progress of the fire, allowing firefighters to perform search and rescue or find the seat of the fire. A quick size up of the structure is key to inform the ventilation crew of hazards, building construction, and fire conditions. As you're placing ground ladders or grabbing tools, take a mental construction note. What is the wall type supporting the roof? Is it unreinforced masonry, which dates back almost a century and has a tendency to fail under fire? Or do the walls appear smooth and relatively new like this concrete tilt-up, which depends on the roof to keep the walls intact? Has the structure been renovated to cover up older construction styles? These are some of the factors which not only date the structure, but can give clues to the strength of the roof and member direction. Noticing these clues can take the guesswork out of a sawyer's job. It can also inform the ventilation crew of allowable time spent above the fire. A size up of how the fire is progressing allows the ventilation crews to plan their tactics and strategies. If there is fire through the roof, then the ventilation crew has one of two options. No ventilation needed or falling back so the crew can implement a defensive cutting operation. Is there heavy dark turbulent smoke coming from the attic vents? Or is there no smoke showing requiring no ventilation at all? This time spent on a size up can translate to a safe ventilation operation. Safety is of the utmost importance on a ventilation assignment. The most dangerous place to be on a structure fire is above it. Full structure PPEs are to be worn, including an SCBA. Going on air is critical before stepping onto the roof. When laddering a structure, place the aerial or ground ladder in a location which does not place the ventilation crew in danger. Much like wildland firefighting, vertical ventilation safety can incorporate LCES. On a ventilation crew, the captain can assume a role of lookout. Communication should be established between crew members that radios are on the right channel and VPUs are turned on. Prior to leaving your ladder, escape routes should be communicated between crew members on how to get to your designated safety zone. Roles and responsibilities should be discussed prior to going on an incident. The firefighters are typically task-oriented, focusing on construction and cutting technique. The engineer will sound to and from the work location, providing guidance, and opening up the ventilation hole once cutting is complete. The captain should have a wider perspective on the operation, focusing on safety and communications. Having this perspective makes for a safer operation. Get out in your district and investigate roof styles and construction. Pre-plan your area to become familiar with building characteristics, cutting techniques, and potential hazards. In this Blackboard lesson, we're going to cover commercial building, vertical ventilation techniques, and construction. We understand the county is extremely diverse, with each district having its own unique challenges as far as roof construction and ventilation techniques. Only common roof styles and ventilation techniques are going to be covered in this lesson.